It's a very important topic and then uh, uh, people are confused also even uh, after uh, so many years also we are not able to really think that what should be started in which group of patients. Now, before we start, can you move it to some other place? Picture in picture, remove them. So, uh, for the students over here, we must know that uh, the, the nomenclature, which is again sometimes, you know, maybe misleading, that the nomenclature, when you call it your ovulation induction, that's the pharmacological treatment of anovulation oligo or oligoovulation with your intention to induce normal ovarian cycle. So, that's a normal ovulatory cycle. When you are talking about controlled ovarian hyperstimulation, pharmacological, that's, that's pharmacological treatment in which ovaries are stimulated to induce multiple ovarian follicle for multiple oocyte aspirations. The IVF cycle you are talking about, when we talk about super ovulation, that means you need to release more than one oocyte in women with regular monthly ovulation. Instead of one follicle, there are number of follicles coming, so the chances of conception will be more. You can make it a little bigger. There's no problem. Now, what we are uh, going to discuss is this group, that is group 2. at the hypothalamic level and estrogen from too many immature follicles. So it's that the immature follicles are giving estrogen. So that is leading to increase your static elevation of estrogen resulting in static. We need a pulsatile LH for ovulation. Whereas there is no pulsatile LH. So there is no LH star, so there is no ovulation. And low FSH, so there are too many immature follicles. So this is simply to simplify for the postgraduates. Now let's come to the, the population inductions. Lifestyle modification just now has been uh, elaborated by uh, and then this is, you know, this is the most important part. Not only in the adolescent uh, group, but also in, 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 in patients who are coming in fertile, I keep saying, Is, you know, I can reduce 5 kg weight. So in next two months, he comes back. I have reduced to 5 kg weight, sir. I said, you are looking more beautiful now. Don't you want to become more beautiful after this? He says, yes. Then you reduce more. So you have to really, the point is that you have to really tell them. The evidence says that, level A evidence that, you know, uh, an increase in exercise combined with dietary change has considerably been shown. Diabetic risk comparable to better. The evidence is also that, you know, it, there is improvement in the glucose tolerance and lipid levels. And the rates uh, improve pregnancy rates and decrease heart disease. The drugs which we are going to discuss is Aromatous inhibitors, gonadotropin, and laparoscopic ovarian trilling, which is a surgical induction of ovulation. Now, uh, evidence based that what we are today, we stand here just to take a uh, take home message based on evidence based medicine. Now, till 2010, there was no evidence based protocol guide. The initial and subsequent choices of operation in that
But the problem of ovulation reduction in the CC, we all know that the ovulation is fantastic, 80 to 85 percent, and the pregnancy rate is only 20 to 25 percent, and the possible because of this anti-estrogen effect that can be in. And then we have numerous articles which swing the receptivity of the endometrium is not only the thickness of the endometrium which is concerned, but the blood flow is also concerned. Blood flow comes Based, I'll come one by one. Now, let us not forget clomiphene citrate, but clomiphene citrate, the mechanism of action, you all know that you know the blockade of the H. which you usually use. recommends maximum 100 milligram though we know that maximum 150 milligram you can you can you, you can keep before saying that there is no ovulation taking place even after 150 milligram of clomiphene citrate which is called clomiphene resistance now uh, there is one more protocol which was popular but not very really popular now is that you just keep on increasing the dose if you find there is no dominant follicle, more than 15 millimeter, you can just increase the dose up to 150 milligram. And the whole cycle, even you are not waiting for the period, the menstruation to come. So in that case, you know, it, it, it was said that there is a higher ovulation and cycle taken, which can be used as Personal experience that uh, we did start long back like this, particularly when they are not responding to the initial clomiphene citrate regimen, but we did not have a much increasing result. Now, problems with CC, as I've already said, that the anti there can be iatrogenic gluten phase defect. And there can be clomiphene resistance, as I've already said. And clomiphene failure means that when she's ovulating, but she is not having conception. So that is clomiphene failure. So that's the problem. So how to really overcome this? Then this journey of aromatase inhibitor, particularly letrozole, has come. I said it is a journey because there are a lot of features in that journey. I'll talk. So, mainly the, it is uh, based on the philosophy that like other cells also in ovaries, there are aromatase activities. And if we do a, a aromatase, there can be ovulation. That's the basic philosophy. But uh, the beauty is that the half-life is only 45 hours, 30 to 45 hours. That was banned for quite some time. Now, mechanism of action here, same, you know, it inhibits aromatase in time, blocks the E2 production, and the negative feedback of E2 is being released, so there is increased FSA secretions. And as I said, because Bed is properly formed, that means there is improvement in the implantation. Now, what advantage we are getting? Besides all this, you see there is no anti-estrogenic effect and there is favorable endometrium. There is lower risk of multiple pregnancy. I, am, I have not seen with letters of induction, there is multiple pregnancy. 
may be that multiple pregnancy because of other reasons. This is well tolerated and safe without significant contraindications. Let us go by the evidence. The, 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 the uh, first evidence we went, you know, that is one was a real problem from 2011. We Flow, that means the receptivity of the endometrium is much better with uh, with uh, letrozole. After this, many more studies have come, but uh, this one is. Uh, so, receptivity of the endometrium is the key thing after the ovulation takes place and after the conception takes place. How do you give letrozole? There are various regimen. And uh, you can give from uh, there can be extended regimen, there can be single dose treatment. But out of all this, the experience says that you know 2.5 milligram is the best and higher doses there's this persistent aromatase inhibition. So there, the pregnancy rate is not a higher. So you can you can stick to 2.5, but maximum 5, not more than 5 milligram. Let us journey from 2014 onward. This was the last Cochrane. After that, regarding letters of the Cochrane review has not come, and there were 26 RCTs filed. There they have and 17 RCTs were later to versus CC, C RCTs were And the conclusions of this was that later all increases the live birth rate and pregnancy rate in subfertile women with anovulation symptoms compared to CC. There is no difference in the effectiveness between later all. Letrozole and clomiphene citrate plus metformin are superior. So if you are doing giving clomiphene citrate, if you add metformin, this is better. And this incited along with the letrozole is the only treatment showing a significant higher rate of live birth. So that is clearly showing that you know letrozole has got uh, more age compared to this is the American College uh, 2000 more than 30 kg per meter square that is also be considered as a first line therapy because of higher life birth rate and comparable to CC alone this is again another very, very, very recent study, 2017, that also includes, this is also a multi-
other important factors to improve ovulation, pregnancy, death, pregnancy and life rates. So what I started that it should be considered. Now I because the evidence says that it is it, it is a better drug. Conflicting what was the conflict and that conflict is over. This was the of locomotor malformations and cardiac anomalies in some of the babies. After that, there was a hue and cry, and then five people in a small familiar room who are the PCOS expert decided that let us all because this is showing some best thing. And then you got this news in times of winter. I still remember early in the morning, this news comes and says, We are very happy with letters all that time. And then it was not only banned, it was out of the market because, you know, people may face uh, a jail term if somebody is really manufacturing and using it. Then came this landmark study that this was a multicentric trial to clear the doubts because that was only 150 babies and this was a multicentric trial. And clearly then it showed that this is latest evidence 2017 and clearly it showed that the results suggest that letrozol stimulation reduces the risk of miscarriage and there is no increased incidence of congenital malformations. So this landmark study changed everybody in the world and then India also, then the gadget says that it recommends them 3rd of January 2017, after that only we start. Recommends that the suspension of manufacture and sale of distribution of the said drug may be revoked and the drug be allowed for induction of ovulation. So this was the journey of... Then comes the next part is that when it is uh, registered, then in that case also you can use letrozole, bivonide, particularly metformin, but I have already said only metformin may not do the job, so you can combine. Prospective trial 2012 clearly shows noivin citrate plus metformin is superior if you compare with CC. The, another study 26 randomized. The many a trial, and there the conclusion apart from gonadotropin, metformin plus metrozole is also potentially more effective in improving reproductive outcome. It are metformin plus letrozole, it has got a better effect. Use of ovulation induction, HMG, gonadotropin, you all know that there are various regimes, low dose, low dose, step up, step down, sequential and congenital. This is only when you are trying when you are trying in a resistant cases and uh, in case when you are really down regulating and doing the IVF cycle. So low dose regimen is very simple that you, so it is logistically it is little difficult but you start with 30. This journey to find that whenever the follicle is a dominant follicle to trigger the case. So low slow treatment regimen, this is in PCOS, 
if insulin resistant this patient and metformin you are giving uh, uh, you are adding metformin this is a very good option in in PCOS step down uh, protocol has got some disadvantages because there is more chances of over over OHSS hyperstimulation syndrome then you start with the higher dose and gradually you are you know tapering the dose till you get this picture and you give a huge treatment so far you know the the evidence is concerned that uh, in case of PCOS when you are considering HMG low dose uh, step up protocol is better than step down There you can use as a sequential regime, you can use as a conjunctional regime if you are not getting good result. In that case, if you use the woman with so some response to CC, reduce the cost and doses of monotropic required results similar to monotropic. So it's cost effective, you know. It reduces the ample of uh, HMG if you are acting that Tell this that people have tried after the letrozole, you know, uh, with this dosing letrozole, and we had a study in the in the institute also. We had more drilling because that time drilling was very doubtful and debatable topic, which is not debatable now today. But you know, our experience was good, but the only problem disorder in the uh, liver function test. So it's a hepatotoxic drug, so that is why people are not really very comfortable using dosiglitazone. Bioinositol again, another area which is a which was a grey area, still it is a grey area. But uh, you know the philosophy is that the tissue availability of myositol and its metabolites in PCS, there it, it, it contributes. Uh, to the insulin resistance itself. If there is an elevated concentration of myonositol in the human follicular fluid, that indicates that required. Evidence says this is required and this also improves insulin sensitivity, decreases fasting insulin. Myonositol stimulates also glycogen synthesis. Nitrogen in the circulation is less. So all these are, you know, uh, philosophy of uh, using myoinositol. I will just focus this couple of studies, which are recent studies. How, where do we stand about myoinositol? And the myoinositol improves ovulation rate, frequency of menstrual cycle. Myonositol also improves metabolic profile of the woman of PCOS. But the Cochrane says, but when this is happening, that means the ovulation may be also happening. And there are reports that ovulation rates are better. So far as the Cochrane studies can come, it is uncertain whether inositol improves live birth rate or uh, clinical pregnancy rate, study rate or multiple pregnancy rate. But definitely we know that it, it helps in it helps in, in ovulation and particularly in a resistant cases where you are adding myonositol, maybe you are giving other drugs like clomipin citrate or letrozole. I'll just take two minutes more. So what about the business study? This study should currently be considered an experimental therapy in PCOS, emerging evidence, highlighting the need for future. Uh, that means it is on us, but uh, it does. So far, women taking inositol and other complementary therapies are encouraged to advise their health professionals. So it is up to you to start. So far, inositol is that it is not very encouraging, larger market in 2006 said that was not associated with 
in a clinical pregnancy when you when still waiting for Doubts are not, uh, now doubts are clear. If you are following the rule of four, and if you are a, if you are a good laparoscopic surgeon, putting your needle vertically, you are not damaging anything. Rule of four means you are using this and then if you are leaving a lot of fluid, 100 to 150 cc of normal saline inside the cavity, then there is a very, very remote chance or I must say a theoretical risk of compromising ovarian reserve or the additions formations. The report says so. So, uh, this is the dangerous. What is dangerous is people do not know, many people do not know that you must not Studies, if the volume related is drilling is done, even unilateral drilling is as efficacious. Your ovarian reserve, it, 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 it is never compromised. What does this international evidence say? I read carefully that laparoscopic ovarian surgery could be the second. take messages I think I have given all this review and uh, I still feel that well uh, letrozole is, is the first line of treatment you can if you are switching over to HMG then low dose uh, step up protocol is best these are expensive and if you are compared with the recombinant one it gives the same result myositol appears uh, regulate menstrual cycle Population and induce metabolic changes in PCOS. OHSS is a serious and arbitrary result of sewage in superpopulation. We must always look for it. A laparoscopic ovarian drilling they can be used as the first line. Thank you very much for your kind attention and uh,